Welcome back to our operational case study exam. Now, let's revise the core activity number A. It's all about the costing information. Now, SIMA publishes the assessment outcomes, and you will need to tell the examining team that, yes, you will need to understand the digital stuff, for example, digital costing, and other costing methods and the costing information to operational and senior management and different costing methods systems determining which one would be suitable um, as I said the digital cost objects okay so for example we see study platforms and something like that and therefore I would like to split this section into five topics including absorption and marginal costing ABC joint byproduct costing, digital product, how to cost them, and even the decision-making technique called throughput accounting. Let's get started with the topic one about absorption costing and marginal costing. Now, absorption costing, or we can call it as the AC, would just be very, very straightforward, because this method will establish the full production costs of a particular product. So the full production costs, I will always say to my student that we've got the variable production costs. For example, the prime costs, such as the direct materials, for example, is the higher value of materials, for example, in car industries, that would be the engine. The direct labour, which means the labour responsible for producing that product. And even some of the direct expenses. So for example, the direct expense such as the royalty expense. Okay? Uh, for example, if you want to use my bond to produce your product, for each product that you produce, you need to pay me one dollar. And that will be the royalty expense. Now, not just with the prime cost within the full production cost, but also that we have got the indirect cost, which means overhead. That's related to production, in other words. That's known as overhead. Now here, I would like to split that into the variable production overhead, or OH for short, so for example the electricity expenses, and the fixed production overhead, for example, the rent and rate in our factory. Now, plotting all of these, and that will be the full production cost per unit, and, and this is what I mean by absorption costing. Now, the absorption costing is actually looking at this one, the fixed production overhead. Okay, so let me just to give you a very straightforward example. Let's say that our rent and rate, or rental expense, let's say ninety dollars, and we have got, let's say. 30 unit of product they produce and therefore that we will charge three dollars per unit and this would be as the OAR or the overhead absorption rate to the product simple and I highlight in green, and this is what I mean by the AC, or absorption costing. Now, how about for marginal costing on the other hand? I would say that if you say about marginal costing, I would say that we are not particularly interested in the short term the fixed production overhead issues. We are completely ignore that in the short term. Of course, we would like to charge the fixed production overhead as the period expense, 
in our marginal costing when computing the net profit in the end. So the reason why we're ignoring this is think about it in this way. So there'll be lots of fixed production overhead, and one of them is called depreciation expenses. And uh, related to the decoration and something like that, or related to our equipment depreciation. I mean, the depreciation expense simply based on the amount of cash that we spent years ago. For example, when we firstly upgrade the factory and decorate the factory and to buy the equipment. For example, five years ago, I spent $10 already. But I will charge $1 each and every year as the depreciation expense. Now, the reason is, for whatever costing and pricing decisions that you need to make later on, you will need to recover those costs. And this is why we've got that concept here. So here's the problem. Should we consider that depreciation in the short term? Well, the answer is probably no. The reason is, if you consider the depreciation in your product cost in the short term, of course, when you price that product, I mean, to set up your selling price, determining how much you would like to sell, and that selling price would be not very competitive, would be a bit high. So this is the issue that we always need to bear that in mind, is that the real difference between absorption and marginal costing in costing a product is where the absorption costing includes the fixed production overhead. Okay, includes rent and decoration, depreciation, that kind of stuff. However, marginal costing does not really include rent. So this means that the absorption costing, what gives us the higher costing value, marginal costing, what gives us the lower cost value in the end. Of course, when using marginal costing, as we can see there, usually it's for decision making purposes. Decision making by our management team members deciding whether or not we should go ahead with that project or to produce that product or to abandon that product. It's more of the internal stuff because we are not really involving shareholders when we are using marginal costing. Now think about it this way. You and I set up a business and to sell a particular pen. For example, think about it this way. If I were to say to you, well, this pen is relatively cheap because we don't consider rent in size, and therefore I would like to sell this pen at $1 per pen, per unit, to a customer. So you may be worrying that, well, we have been put lots of money at the start in buying the equipment, in producing that pen. But you're simply saying to me that pen when I sell it, I get the sales revenue, I do not need to worry about the investment I input in the first place. So that's a real problem of the marginal costing. Because we are not simply looking at costing. I mean, yes, from management's point of view, because I care very much about the speed I can sell this pen and the ability I can sell off these pens. But I don't really care about the, in the short term at least, I don't really care about the investments that I input into the business in the first place. So this is why we have got the absorption costing here. Because the, the absorption costing is really looking at the external investors' point of view. Because we are telling them each and every time when I sell this pen, I would include that depreciation and decoration, depreciation overhead in so to increase up the cost base and then to sell it at a higher price. But we are not basing on the absorption cost to uh, determine our selling price. So this is why it's always for the long term reporting purposes. I'm not saying that we are completely ignoring the 
rent expense in our marginal costing because I would like to charge the rent expense so we will consider rent in the net profit calculation okay now if you can explain I mean the points that I've given to you for example absorption costing is higher including rents is for ex external reporting purposes for suitable uh, to the external investors to see what's going on regarding the performance of the business and marginal costing does not include rent in our product uh, shows to be a lower figure but consider that rent in the net profit calculation for short-term decision making for internal management you have got more than six points in your answer good job however the examining team according to my experience over the years in teaching the OCS I've seen many scenarios that the examining team would like to complicate this further and you will need to tell the examining team about the next three points firstly as I said before that in a previous example as you can see on my screen that the fixed production overhead related to rental expenses I've set up I've just calculated it's the OAR or the overhead absorption rate to be three dollars per unit well the examining team may complicate this as well we have got different bases or method to calculate that three dollar so for example in our previous example I've divided into 30 unit which means the number of unit well that number of unit is like the blanket rate okay and this is like the blanket rate and this may not be quite suitable to businesses where you have got more than one product so for example you've got two or more products and therefore you may need to consider for each cost center whether or not they are labor intensive or machine intensive environment so if it's labor intensive of course you need to use labor hours as your denominator if it's machine intensive machine hours as your denominator when calculating the overhead absorption rate so that will be one point they need to think about that the second point they need to think about about the OAR is all about the budgeted figures which means they're estimating what may happen in the future so therefore it will result in the under or over absorption of overhead adjustment in your calculation so therefore we need to be very careful on that and to checking the calculation where it not the business adjusted this in the cost of sales in the PL in each of the period end and that's important the final point is the relationship between absorption and marginal costing I would say that this is the final point each and every time I come up and of course you need to use the very standardized approach to answer these questions is the relationship between absorption costing and the marginal costing I like to use a particular formula for this now because I know that the difference between absorption and marginal costing is that when we are looking at the cost of one product where not it includes rent which means where not it includes the fixed production overhead in if the answer is yes that will be absorption costing if the answer is no then that will be a marginal costing I like to use the absorption costing profit and to minus the marginal costing profit that would be the production volume minus the sales volume 
and times by the production fixed overhead per unit. Okay. So this means that during the year, if I've produced a hundred units already, but I sold only eighty. So this means that production higher than the sales volume. And therefore, absorption cost in profit will be higher than the marginal cost in profit. Because we've got the closing inventories are there, and this means that, that we have deducted more for costs in the cost of sales okay, during the year. Because for each of the pen, for example, we are talking about the product, and we are including the rental expense in, and this is why the costs would be higher in the absorption costing system than the marginal costing system. Because we've got the items unsold, in computing a cost of sales, we need to minus the unsold inventories known as the closing inventories. And therefore, because we are using the absorption costing, let's say that we've included the rental expense in, and therefore the cost of sales figure will be reduced by a higher amount, and therefore absorption cost in profit will be higher. But of course, the examining team will be very interested in the final point is that in the long term, ignoring time value of money, the total of the absorption cost in profit will be the same as the total of the marginal cost in profit. Okay, so make sure so you're ready. Now, the examining team will always, 9 out of 10, will complicate the scenario by adding these three parts in and make sure that you spot them and to comment on those. If you can't do this, absolutely fine. Just write the overall principles as I've told you before. Now, for example, in my pre learned paragraphs, absorption costing, including fixed overhead, includes these sort of elements and how to calculate the OAR, and to adjust for under over absorption of overhead. Of course, the inventory valuation will be affected if you are using the absorption cost in because we'd like to bring the rental expense in. Of course, the impact on profit, as I said before, for example, the absorption costing profit and marginal costing profit differences. But in the longer term, and these two systems, total profit will be the same. For marginal costing, on the other hand, you can read them, for example, the inventory cost will include the variable production cost only. And we are focusing on the concept called contribution, because we are taking the revenue and to minus all of our variable costs and to determine whether or not this is profitable, but in the short term. And we will need to minus the fixed cost when we calculate the net profit later on. And when comparing with absorption costing, because of the difference between the production and sales volume, and this is why these two systems would give the short-term profit differences. The advantage is for decision making, but it will not cover fixed costs if you, in the longer term, to make your pricing decision only basing on the variable cost rather than the fixed cost. Now, if you know these points, absolutely enough. Now, from the past exam, for example, you can see that we have got different products split into variable and fixed, and we are required 32% for the subtask A that preparing a report and you can completely ignore the format stuff in this exam. You simply say that, okay, in one question, that will be 12 paragraphs. 12, of course, sometimes 15, absolutely fine, but 12 will be absolutely fine now. Now, 12 paragraphs and times by 32%, I would like to write approximately how many paragraphs are there, 3.6, four paragraphs in there. Okay, now uh, we need to explain the difference in how profit is calculated in both marginal and absorption costing, oops, based on the table one. 
Oh, okay, so this means that I know that marginal costing, one paragraph, absorption costing, one paragraph. But I need to tailor to the table one calculation. So at the same time, the impact of different methods on the profit in the short and long term, so one and one paragraphs in there. So this means that I would like to write four paragraphs, okay? So for each of the sub requirements that the examiner asked me to do that. Of course, if you see in the OCS exhibit, I mean, this is what I mean by exhibit space is not the pre-seen material, of course. Uh, now, uh, for example, the senior management team members reviewing the sales figures and suggesting we should use marginal costing and the statement is incorrect, asking for explanation so we are attaching the table one and so on. You can see that the exhibit really gives or explains nothing. I mean, if you're testing about the te technical stuff, such as the absorption costing, that kind of stuff, I mean, the exhibit, yes, just read through them, but you don't really have to uh, in your answer to refer it back of what senior management team members said. Stop doing that, okay. Just focus on the technical stuff. Now, we're told that the actual fixed production overhead is 5% higher than budgeting. Okay, so what this means is that the examining team asking you what? Well, to my mind, it's asking you the actual is different from a budget. Asking you about this one. Okay, so you will need to tell the examining team, of course, yes, I would like to explain what marginal costing, absorption costing, the calculation, how I do about it. But we are told you need to specifically relate back to the table one. Table one, now, we need to focus on the two notes given by the examining team. For example, the first note is that we spend higher than budget. So this means that you didn't account for that in the first place, and this would result in the under absorption of fixed overhead. So when you are commenting on the uh, absorption costing, of course, you would need to tell the examining team that, okay, we will need to adjust for that, okay. Number two, the actual production was lower than budgeted. Oh, okay, so this means that we produce less. We produce less in our earlier absorption costing studies from your uh, SIMA P1 and even the BA2, it will result in the under absorption of fixed overheads. But because of the low sales and inventory of all three models in the range increased, which means we've got something unsold. Now this means that the production is higher than the sales, okay? So this means that if production higher than sales, testing you what? Testing you about the differences between absorption and marginal costing. Talking about absorption costing profit will be a lot higher during the year. Now, how do I construct this answer? Of course, you can see the suggested answer okay, here. But um, I will need to tell the examiner, for example, I like to take impact on profit in the short term. In the short term, for example, I'll tell the examining team such as this. Now, my point, in the short term, profit under absorption marginal costing systems differ. which is a 
differences in sales and production volume timing by the fixed production overhead per unit. Now as I said before, this is the first sentence. In one paragraph, my advice will be two sentences, although this is not officially announced by SEMA, but you can see in the answer, you don't need to write too many separate points, but you need to answer the requirements uh, asked by the SEMA examining team. So the second sentence I like to write there will be related to the table one. So, of course, in this case, that the AC profit, you can use abbreviations, absolutely fine, a higher than the MC profit because the sales is low per table one. That's it. Do I need to refer it back to the pre C material? No. As long as you know the pre C material product name, absolutely fine. Do I need to relay back to the exhibits in the unseen such as this? No. The examining team asks you, okay, to consider table one, do it. Simple. This approach is completely different from other qualifications and even in the management case and the strategic case. Okay, and you can see my demos over there. Right, there's another question that I've taken from a past exam and for you to practice on. Okay, no problem for that whatsoever. Let's move on about topic two, ABC or activity-based costing. Now, the problem of the absorption costing would be this. The absorption costing problem is that we need to calculate the OAR, which means the overhead absorption rate, and therefore we've got three particular complications or problems. The basis of setting up the OAR, the budgeted figure, different from the actual, and the differences between absorption and marginal costing. Let me write this down firstly. In absorption costing, yes, we are based on the OAR, or overhead absorption rate, which means we take the budgeted overhead from each department or cost centre, if you like, and to divide this into the budgeted activity level from different cost centres. So this means that in a particular factory, there might be cost centre, for example, cost centre A, cost centre B which means the uh, machine department A and the inspection department B. We are taking the budget overheads from each of the departments in turn and to divide this into the budget activity levels. So for example, we may be considering in the department A, we'll need 100 labour hours. In department B, we need 50 machine hours and something like that. However, in a modern business environment, it 
in more than business environment. When we are producing the item, the way to produce the item may not be the same in the traditional environment. From, because from a traditional uh, environment, firstly, you will need to go through that department, passing through that department, and then to the second department, and then to the third department, and becoming the final product here. However, in the modern business environment, things may change. For example, when I produce the item, so in this department, other departments may join. For example, they may be sitting there in a cell and then my product, for example, go through this person passing to the next one and even the other two will come through to produce the item together. In sale 1, after that, we'll pass the product in sale 2. Now, here's the problem. It's not talking about each of the departments in isolation, but uh, in producing that product, each of the departments will work with each other to produce the final product. And that is the main problem. So this is why, instead of using the budgeting overhead from the call center, but now I would like to estimate the budgeting overhead in the, in the ABC or activity-based costing, but not from the call center anymore, but from each of the activity in turn. I would like to divide this into the budgeting activity level Now, activity meaning quite a lot of things. For example, if you're talking about, let's say, the electricity, because for each of the product in turn, they need to have electricity to support uh, that production. If you're talking about inspection, on the other hand, that'll be another activity. So, for example, when we are inspecting things, we may need the general managers to come through and to oversee the process and we may be needing the inspection department staff and to do the inspection work and even the production managers will need to come through and to see what is going on. And even the R&D research and development and sometimes the marketing will be another activity. And we also have got the final activity will be related to rent. Okay. Now, as we can see there, we need to estimate the activity, what would be the budget overhead, and here we are using the term called cost pool. Now, imagine that there's a large pool in front of you, we are throwing things inside the pool, okay, so which means we need to consider the input or the effort made by each of the department into a single activity. So for example, within inspection activity, we'll need effort from general manager, inspection department, production department, and even warehouse. Wow, each activity will need four departments, for example. So what you need to do is to try your best in an arbitrary way to link overhead from each of the department in turn into this activity and that would be quite arbitrary and that would give rise to inaccurate estimate of the costs. Of course the ways the estimates the budget activity level same as what we've seen in the OAR overhead absorption rate calculation as you can see that will be also quite arbitrary not accurate at all because for budget activity level in the ABC, or activity-based costing here, we can use two types of activity levels. One is the number of them, number of times that this happens, 
second, we can use the duration. So, for example, how many hours that we need to spend in this particular activity. So, this is the idea of the ABC. ABC would like to use the top, top divided into the bottom, and that will give me the cost per driver. And using that cost per driver, and timing by the number of drivers, so we can treat this as the overhead to the product. For example, I would like to talk about inspection for example. Now, if I'm talking about inspection here in the numerator, the budget overhead from this inspection activity, and I estimate that to be $200. And I estimate that the number of inspections that we need to perform during the year will be a total of 100. So cost per driver, I would like to take 200 over 100, and that will be $2 per inspection. And for this particular product, I will need to have three inspections, for example, and therefore I would like to charge or to absorb, yes, we can also use the word absorb in the ABC, we would like to absorb $6 into the product under ABC there. That's the basic idea. And of course, in the ABC, I created pre-learned paragraphs summarizing from many past exams of the SEMA. You can directly learn them really. Of course, for absorption costing, one of the major problems is that it will be volume based. What do I mean by volume based? Is that if the volume is high in absorption costing, there will be higher overhead to be charged. Low, there will be lower overheads to be charged. However, in ABC, we are charging costs not based on the volume, but basing on the activity level, and that will be very important there. Of course, you will need to understand the principles of the ABC. So firstly, you will need to estimate the cost pool, which means the estimated overhead, and then over appropriate cost drivers. For example, the number of inspections and something like that. You need to establish the direct link between activity and cost. So for example, you will need to try your best to estimate what will be the cost pool for a particular activity that really reflects the effort made from each of the departments in turn. Of course, if you can do it in a scientific way, of course, more accurate. Therefore, better for decision and long-term costing and pricing will be more accurate. So these are sort of principles. However, the downside of that is, if you cannot do the step one correctly, which means if you're estimating the busty overhead from activity in the wrong way, everything that you've done would not be okay. Now, from your earlier study, of course, when to use ABC. I would, use, I would say that ABC is used when overhead accounts for quite a lot of a total cost. So, usually, in practice, more than 20% of the total cost are overhead, yes, we can consider to use ABC. Besides, if the product is quite complex, for example, the product requirement itself, production itself, the way they produce the product, quite complicated, yes, we can use ABC. Now, suitable when? If you are these two, in each of your time that you are discussing about ABC, of course, very likely you will score full marks on that. Now, I've included a past exam question regarding ABC. As you can see, yes, the exhibit, very, very long, but go to the requirement firstly, 
please by email we can ignore the format of email report in this exam in our answer firstly the effectiveness of our existing overhead absorption rate are okay what does that mean it means that the unseen exhibit given by the examining team if, if, if you can see that there you need to tell the examining team the pros and cons, which means the good side and downside of our existing OAR, which means the effectiveness, which means whether or not it's effective, whether or not it's good. I mean, I would say that if you're using something, of course, you're not completely saying that the things I've used would be rubbish. I mean, it has good sides, of course, it has downside. So you need to think about them. Number two, how the ABC system will improve the common understanding of the costs associated with running the paint process, help us to control, hopefully, to reduce these costs. Well, how many requirements are there? From my perspective, firstly, you will need to tell the examining team what is ABC. That's the first requirement. Second, whether or not it can control costs. I would say that if you do the step one correctly, yes, you can control costs. Whether or not you can reduce those costs, number three, it really depends. I mean, by using ABC, you can better link the activity with the cost. You can establish the relationship between them, which means known as cost driver. So this means that in the long term, you can understand costs better so you can understand what sort of activities are value added and non-value adding so you get rid of the non-value added activities in the end now there are actually one two one two one two three so this means that there are actually five areas that you need to answer in this particular question now remember in the OCS exam it's not about Think about the precinct. Okay, I need to go back to a precinct material. No, never do it. Even though you completely ignore the precinct, you can still pass this paper with high marks. But of course, knowing a bit of precinct will be absolutely enough, okay, in this paper. You can see the answer, okay, I provided you. Of course, use your understanding to write out the answer. Don't memorize the answer. Do not really have to use the exact same words uh, from the previous example in my OCS case book, but uh, to use your own words will be absolutely nothing there. Now, before we move any further, I would like to stop this recording and I look forward to seeing you in the topic three. Bye bye. ABC, accounting for your future.